Hey brothers and sisters, church family, I'm um, just making a follow-up video. I know I said that uh, I was going to start posting more videos from uh, some of the Bible studies that we've been doing, but uh, <laughs> I haven't really been able to get around to them, uh, you know, with work and uh, my time schedule and then coming home and then still doing the Bible studies and it makes it a little difficult for me to uh, post some videos, but I want to see if hopefully uh, I can try to get uh, at least one video per week for you guys so you guys can see some of the things that we're going over in the Bi in the Bible study you know like I said last time I've been so blessed with the Bible studies and and I just want to find a, a time to be able to share some of the things that I've learned you know uh, we can go over the same text over and over uh, the same chapter time after time but uh, the Lord always you know speaks something new either through what we're going through at that time or whatever he he, he wants to speak to us at that time and um, I'm just uh, so blessed that I want to kind of share some of these things. Now, um, uh, before we get into the Bible study portion of this, you know, which I'm going to be doing a video for next week, I wanted to give you guys kind of just a little bit of context about where, where we're going to be going over now. I chose the book of Matthew to go over just because it was one of the synoptic gospels, right? We had Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John because um, we know that John is is part of the, the canonical uh, gospels but it's not part of the synoptics because i i believe like 90 percent of john is um uh different uh experiences that john had or or, or different events recorded in, in john's book that are specific to john's book so i wanted to go with one of the synoptic gospels right much of what's written mark matthew and luke are similar with uh, various of differences right uh, small differences so I want to start there just because from my experience as a, as a Christian and I've you know I've read the Old Testament I've read the New Testament you know uh, through and through and um, one of the things that has helped me and I hope hopefully is beneficial to you guys as well is that I noticed that I started with one of the synoptic gospels and I jumped from there to Acts right because we want to listen to what it is that Jesus had to say right and right after that we have the the book of acts which is the disciples that walk with jesus and the difference right the change that jesus had in their lives the holy spirit worked in them in, in the book of acts so we want to see uh after we we study the synoptic gospels and we see the life of the disciples then we can go back we can go to genesis and, and from my experience i went back to genesis and read the old testament again and i seen how how powerful it was to now look at the old testament in a new light right and, and we start to see how jesus right is already in the it was already in the old testament and we see it from that perspective and i think it gives us uh, such a powerful perspective and and that's what i want to try to do with us so i want us to go through matthew uh, that's all the one i chose uh out of the three synoptic gospels and um I just, just to give you guys uh, a context of matthew we have to kind of give you a context of uh of the, the other three books right we have the, the the book of mark right which is believed to be the first uh, gospel that was written right um mark who is a uh, uh, named john mark who is believed you know we see him in in the uh the new testament the epistles of paul right um uh, is believed to have been the the, the scribe or the interpreter uh, of Peter so um, we see that that right there just from that perspective we see in the book of Mark it takes thoughts right and experiences that Peter had right uh, and, and that's what we see in the book of Mark and, and that's uh, the shortest of the three uh, synoptic gospels and and for that reason because later we have the book of Matthew and we have the book of Luke right who kind of uh, Take bits and parts of the book of Mark and kind of expand on it as we're going to see in a different perspective Right. We see the book of Luke, right? When we see the book of Luke, we see it uh, from the very beginning. It's written to someone named Theophilus, right? We don't know much about Theophilus and not much is said about Theophilus except in the book of, of Luke and then in, in the book of Acts, right? As well, because uh, Luke is the same writer in both books. But uh, not much is said, but um, from, uh, from what some people believe, it's believed that Theophilus is not actually a person, a real person, but actually it's supposed to uh, represent uh, the Christians at that time. So it's as if, it's, is a, 
it's if as Luke is writing to the Christian audience at that time, the Gentiles, right? Because we know after Jesus resurrected, the, the, the message was no longer just for the Jews, but it was also for the Gentiles, for all the uh, non-Jewish believers, right? And so when we read the book of Luke, we see it from that perspective, right? We, we see the even the way um, Luke phrases, you know, it almost takes a little bit of the Jewish, uh, right? Uh, aspect out of it right kind of generalizes you know Jesus as a savior to everyone right and, and and Luke wants to put that emphasis that 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 Jesus came to save everyone right including the Gentiles right and we see that perspective now when we we look at the book of Matthew which is what we're going to be studying um, we know that uh, that Matthew was a Jewish tax collector so naturally when we see the book uh, of Matthew it's almost like he's catering to a Jewish audience, right? We see much of what uh, Matthew writes, even from the from the very beginning of the book, right? He starts off with the gene genealogy, and we're gonna see in uh, the the next uh, uh, study, right, in the next video, uh, the importance of the genealogy and why it was that Matthew started with the genealogy, right? He was trying to um, kind of cater to this Jewish audience, right? Kind of trying to show from the very beginning, from the genealogy, how Jesus was present, right? And you see that throughout his entire book, and we're gonna go over that, right? And and the theme in, in Matthew, you can see, right? Uh, uh, the phrase is always used, the kingdom of heaven is, the kingdom of God is at hand, right? Kind of trying to show the Jewish audience that this Jesus that is in the Old Testament, in the scripture, that this Jesus is present in the Old Testament is now come, right, to establish uh, the kingdom, right? And that's what we see in the book of Matthew as we're going to study a, uh, a little bit about that. Now, um, some of the criticisms that we get when we look at the, uh, the Gospels um, right from the start, you know, many of the people, many people uh, criticize the Gospel. They say, well, many of the Gospel letters, right, that were written, these Gospel letters, they weren't written until many, many years later, right? Uh, it's like, how is it possible that these men were able to remember all that, you know, right? Um, from what we believe, you know, um, the Gospels written were written about, you know, estimate estimating about 40 years after Jesus' death, right, give or take. And as we receive more and more evidences, right, it, that might change. But from what we know, it, it's believed to, that um, the Gospels were written about 40 years after Jesus' death, right? And... Um, uh, the, the epistles of Paul, right? Some of his writings and some of his letters, we go even earlier to 20 years after Jesus' uh, death. So, you know, many of the criti the critics, you know, their, their main criticism is, how is it possible that these letters were written, you know, 40 or, or 20 years after, after Jesus uh, uh, died? How is it possible that they can remember all these things, right? That's too long, right? That's uh, one of the things I remember when I first started, um, you know, uh, studying for myself and looking at some of the, the, the historicity, right, of the Gospels. That's one of the things that came to my mind because I started to think to myself, like, when I think of my memory and anyone that knows me, right, my family, my wife, you know, they know that I have horrible memory, right? My wife will tell me, you know, to do something and 10 seconds later, you know, I'll, I'll already forget. And um, my memory is, is pretty bad, right? So, you know, when I think about that, I say to myself, man, I'm glad that the Gospels, there's not a, a Gospel of, of Andrew, right? Because I say to myself, man, that Gospel would have never been written if it was, if I was to rely on my memory. And, um, but yeah, but when we start to think about, you know, our own memory and we say, well, man, if I can't even remember certain things, how is it possible that these people, right, these authors are, are remembering things from 40, 20 years ago, right? But I want to remind us of one thing, right? Something crucial, right? Whenever we're reading the Bible, whenever we're reading Scripture, especially when we're, when we're talking about the Gospels, we got to take the context of, of, of what is written, right? We got to remember who it is that's writing these letters, right? Uh, to who, the audience, right, that they're writing it to. And the time, right, uh, that they're writing this, right? These are all uh, crucial things, right? Because we think to ourselves, right, and, and we, we have the technology that we have now, right? And I could pick up my phone and, and um, you know, my wife tells me, hey, we need certain groceries, right? I can write, I'm, you know, apples, bananas, uh, 
you know, what, whatever, right? I can put it on my on my phone. I could forget about it, and I get to the grocery store. You know, I don't have to call her. I just look at the list, and and I already know what I have to buy, right? You know, and we have all these 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 advancements in technology, right? Where we no longer have to memorize some of these things. You know, uh, when we think about the GPS, you know, I use this illustration, right? Because when we think about the GPS, right? We, sometimes we don't even know where we're going. We just type in. Now you can type in the. Uh, the what do you call it the location right the how would you say the coordinates right and you don't even know where you're going in the middle of nowhere and it takes you to where you need to be right that's what the the, the gps with the advancements of technology we no longer have to memorize these things you know for those of us who are old enough to remember i remember when i was like 10 years old we would go on a camping trip my dad my uncles you know they would get on top of the car on the hood right and they would bring out this big old book right for those of you guys that remember it was it was called the Thomas Guide, right? And on that, on the Thomas Guide, right, you had you either have all the maps from the United States or or wherever, you know, and it has all these different maps, right? So everything that you have on a GPS, you have it right there in a book, right? And people that were truck drivers, people that that you know had they had to memorize these things, right? The different routes, right? Oh, well, I know this shortcut. We can go this way, right? And these were things that had had to be memorized and just from a small illustration in a short period in time we can see the 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 advancements that we have made in technology has caused us in a way or well, has put us in a place where we no longer have have to memorize these things right but when we think about who the audience was right and who was it that was writing and at what time you know we look at Matthew right for instance the book that we're going to be studying right Matthew was a Jewish tax collector, right? He was Jewish. And from a Jewish perspective, Jewish standpoint, right? Much of what they had was preserving their culture, preserving their tradition, passing that down. So comparing our memory to theirs, you, you can't do that. It was, it was a different time. Uh, at that time, oral tradition was everything to them. That was how they communicated, you know, uh, uh, their tradition, their culture. This is how they preserve some of the things that they had in the past, right? Through through oral tradition, you know. And we gotta think, you know. Now we have paper, right? And even more than paper, we have iPads, we have phones where we can write all these things down. And that time, they didn't have paper. They had, you know, papyrus, things like vellum. And these things were not something that was common to 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 the, the you know the common person, right? This is only the the higher ups had access to these things. So oral tradition or you didn't have a printing press where they could you know uh just uh print and pass all these things down and just write a book and all your thoughts are passed down you know these were things that had to be memorized right and we see in the jewish culture how you know even till, t till this day right how they memorize big portions of scripture right and they have a uh, uh, all, all these things memorized in their mind, right? Because of the oral tradition that is still practiced even to, the, to this day. So imagine in that time when they didn't have these ways, uh, these technologies or uh, ways of communicating, you know, oral tradition was huge in that time, right? So just wanted to use that small illustration, but when we're thinking about 40, 20 years, you know, we say to ourselves like, man, well, I can't remember 40, 20 years ago what happened. But you got to remember that these people that, we're trying to pre preserve these things, especially the Jewish people, you know, for them to remember 40, 20 years ago to them, it probably wouldn't have been that hard because this was something that was practiced, something that they were, that was repetitive, right? So that's what we see when we start to look a little bit closer at the context. And we have to remember uh, that, you know, 40 or 20 years for us might have been, you know, a very long time to remember these things. But um, for someone uh, uh, who was a, a Jewish in the Jewish community who was preserving the culture and even more someone who like Jesus shows up on the scene someone who they've been looking for their entire lives you know how could they forget this and then on top of that we have to remember uh, of course the inspiration of the Holy, Holy Spirit right we have to allow room for uh, for God you know in, in, in all this as well so just a, a couple of things that I want you guys to think about now um, as we're talking about the Gospels right um, I wanted to kind of read to you guys a commentary that that I found. I thought it was um, that's an interesting and though what it says, and I want to share with you guys. And look at what it says. It says the traditions of Jesus' early min earthly ministry and passion were remembered then written in the gospel 
accounts, right? So we're talking about putting things to memory, right? So the earthly ministry was put what in their memory, right? They remembered and written in the Gospels. It says, they were written from the post-resurrection perspective and contain an extensive and common passion narrative as they deal with the earthly ministry of Jesus from hindsight. It is also to be noted that in the evangelist account, their theological presuppositions and the situations of their addresses molded the formation of the four canonical gospels, which were written after the letters of St. Paul, right? So we look at this quote and immediately when we look at this quote, right, it talks about post-resurrection, right? Uh, the disciples remembering and writing these things down, right? This was something that was done in hindsight, right? And the first thing that we see right after that, it says their theological presuppositions and the situations of their addresses mold, molded their formation, right? What does that mean? Right, theological presuppositions. Let's let's simplify this. Let's slim, simplify this. Let's put this in layman terms, right? Theological presuppositions, their biases, right, and the situations of their addresses, their experiences. So we can say their biases and their experiences molded the what the formation of the gospels, right? So their biases and experiences vastly uh, were reflected in the gospels that were written right and when we think about this you know this is another criticism that that the bible and, and especially the the new testament and the gospels get right uh, many of the people say oh well you know wouldn't it be better for uh uh the gospels to have been written right just uh, uh without any bias right without their personal experience being influenced into their into their story wouldn't it have been better to just have you know, jot it down what happened here, right? Like we have in history at times, instead of them having an influence on what was written, wouldn't that be better, right? And many of you see this as something negative, but I, I want you guys to think closely about what it says, right? Their biases and their experiences were molded into their letters, into their gospels, into what they wrote. I want you to think about how powerful that is. I want you guys to think, right? I hope that when there's a car crash, right, you know, or well, I don't hope a car crash, but I'm saying well, that when there's a car crash, that four or five different people who were in that car crash, that all of their stories are not exactly the same, right? That they all didn't have the exact same experience, right? What do I mean, right? When, when the police officer comes to get a, a report, right, he gets the perspective of one person. He gets the perspective of the person over here. And all together, you get the experiences and the perspectives of different people to get what? The entirety of the story, right? So the police, offers, the police officer is not only looking at this and this, right? But he has the entire story that he can look at, right? And that's what we have with the Gospels, right? We have different experiences, different perspectives, different things, different biases, yes. But all with what? Similar uh, details right in the stories right you know I hope that God forbid when I pass away that um, people had different experiences with me you know not everybody had the same stories about me right not everybody had the same experiences with me right but at the same time everybody knew right that that even though they had different experiences different stories that I was the same person right and that's what happens with Jesus right different these different authors these different people who walked with jesus had different experiences right and yes they had biases because they had different experiences right and, and they had these different experiences but all of them came to a what to one similar message and that's what we see in the gospel right and i think when i when i think about that that you know people think of that as a negative but i think to me as a believer, right, as someone who believes in God, that fortifies my faith even more, right? So we see these different criticisms that uh, the Gospels get, right? And, and another uh, uh, criticism that, that, that people make, right, because we say they were written 40, 20 years after, right? They, they say, well, why wasn't it written, like, right after Jesus Jesus died? Why, did, why didn't the, the, the Gospel writers, you know, 
jot down everything that happened, right? Why didn't it, why did they wait 40, 20 years until they did this? And I, was, I want you guys to think about this, right? Us saying that, why didn't they do that right after? We're making an assumption and saying that they didn't write some of these things down. It's very possible that many of these authors that wrote the books 40, 20 years later did write some of those things down, wrote different stories, different experiences they had with Jesus, but they didn't compile them together till 40 or 20, 20 years later, right? Remember, going back to that same point, we, they didn't have a printing press. They didn't have, uh, 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 like we do, how we can instantly send an email and forward it to like a million people and everybody gets the email at the same time. No, you guys gotta remember, they didn't have access to these resources, right? And, and on top of that, uh, um, not many of these people could read and write. You know, we have people like Paul, right? Who had scribes right we had people like like peter who had scribes people who had interpreters for them because they couldn't read and write so there's all these difficulties right in conveying and communicating this gospel message and on top of that right persecution of the early church right you know you, you can't expect you know someone who's under persecution to, to the first thing they're going to be doing is writing all these things down right so we got to take all these things into account and, and realize the context of all this right now the next, the next part I want to look at in this, uh, in this uh, commentary, this quote that I found, it says, they were written from a post-resurrection pers perspective, right? So we say, well, why is it so important to have a post-resurrection uh, perspective, right? I want you guys to think about that. Why is it so important to have a post-resurrection uh, perspective, right? Imagine what the story would have looked like right because we talked about that it's possible that some of these authors could have written these things down but they didn't compile them to way, way later imagine what it would have looked like you know we have a post-resurrection perspective imagine what a pre-resurrection perspective looked like what that would have looked like right how different that would have looked like well you we got to remember that um Many, if you guys remember uh, uh, Peter, right? His experience with Jesus. What happened with him, right? At one point, he gets things right. and At another point, he gets things wrong, right? Jesus, when, when, he's, when he's talking to Peter and he's asking them, you know, you know who do pay, people say that I am, right? And some say, you know, you're, you're, the, you're a prophet. Some say you're the Messiah, you know? And, and, and he asked Peter, well, who do you say I am, right? And Peter answers, answers him, you're the, you're, you're the one true, true God, right? The Son of God. And Jesus at that time says, Blessed are you, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood have not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven, right? And then a couple of uh, verses later, right, chapters down, right, when Jesus is talking about his ascension to heaven and the fact that he has to die and go through all these things, what does Peter say? He's like, never, Lord. You can't die. I won't allow you to die. And what does Jesus say? Get behind me. What? Satan. He calls Peter Satan. So we have this Peter that gets it right, gets it wrong in different occasions, right? And we see the disciples at certain points, right? There's, there's times where Jesus says certain things and they don't understand what, what Jesus is trying to say. And the disciples, there's at one point where, where the disciples are talking to themselves and they say, they don't say anything amongst themselves, but Jesus knows that they don't understand, right? And they, they say, oh, you know, they didn't ask Jesus because they were afraid, right? So we under, we start to think about this, this pre-perspective, uh, uh, this pre-resurrection perspective versus this post-resurrection perspective and how different it would have looked. If you guys remember, um, uh, uh, many of the disciples had some of the same ideas that that the Pharisees had. The only difference between the Pharisees and the disciples were that the disciples what decided to follow Jesus, right? Follow God, right? You know, uh, at one point, uh, uh, the disciples tell Jesus, you, uh, you know, who was who um, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind, and Jesus tells them, no one, but so that the power of God might be revealed, right? And he heals a man. So these disciples at that time believed that because someone sinned that the direct consequence was something, you know, a negative happened to them, right? So this man that was born blind, they're saying, oh, this guy sinned or someone sinned, that's why he's born blind. But Jesus came to dispel that and change that, you know, uh, not change that, but dispel that idea, right? And the Pharisees had the same idea that the 
that the the same disciples had right uh, uh, at one time um there's a blind man that jesus healed right where he put mud in his eyes right and uh, and the pharisees go ask the blind man who healed you right and the the the, the blind man is recount recounting saying a, a man put mud on my eyes right and, and i can see you right and and they don't believe his story they go to his parents and his parents tell tell uh the pharisees he is of age uh, uh you know because they were scared of the the pharisees believe what he says you know and uh the pharisees at that time uh they get mad at the at the blind man they pretty much tell him you were steeped in sin from birth right how dare you lecture us right so the same idea that these disciples thought about uh if you sin right that's why you're born blind was the same idea that the the pharisees had so what i'm trying to get at is that if we would have got this pre-resurrection perspective we would have gotten a, a a completely different story we got to remember that the disciples did not receive the holy spirit right so after jesus ascended right you know if you guys remember uh, uh jesus says uh it, it is better that for for you that i go right if i go you will receive the helper you will receive the advocate right and 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 after that they would receive the holy spirit and, and what's so powerful about that as well i wish I, I had the quote uh off the top of my mind uh ellen white has this quote where she says that um when jesus ascended and they received the holy spirit that they were closer to jesus after he ascended than when he walked with them personally that to me is powerful that's saying that we today can be closer to jesus than the, the disciples who walked with him personally right so this idea the, of this pre-perspective this pre-resurrection perspective versus this post like i would much rather have the post uh peter resurrection perspective than the pre-res uh, uh peter resurrection story right you know i i i think of the analogy right we think of our our spiritual uh spiritual walk you know for when we first met jesus right how much mature how long how far along we've come in our christian walk right you know 20 you know some people 20 years 10 years whatever it may be right and you see how your convictions have changed you've seen how your spiritual walk has changed and the same thing happened with peter how much more would i want to have the perspective of someone who had walked with god talked with god for 40 20 plus years versus someone who was uh um just jotting those things down right then and there right so this idea right of, of post-resurrection uh perspective to me is so powerful because to me it shows you know it shows so much more of what the disciples were able to grasp from what well, after jesus walked right and we see that even in the book of john when the book when the book of john is written right which is written many years later after uh the other gospels we can see a totally different perspective where john is writing from a perspective of god being love right in the 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 first very first chapter you know in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god right and we see this perspective of john already uh showing jesus as god right and we show how he kind of shows this perspective of god being love right and all these different things right that john is able to pull after walking and talking with god for so long that couldn't have come from a pre-resurrection perspective so to me that reaffirms if anything uh uh the christian faith and i think that uh, that to me is even more powerful i want to end uh with just a a, a short um little um quote that i have here from ellen white um it's from her introduction in the great controversy it's one of my favorite quotes that she has and look what it says here it says as pre as presented through different individuals the truth is brought out in its varied aspects one writer is more strongly impressed with one phase of the subject he grasps those points that harmonize with his experience or with his power of the per of perception and appreciation another seizes upon a different phase and each under the guidance of the holy spirit presents what is more most forcibly impressed upon his own mind a different aspect of the truth in each 
but a perfect harmony through all and all and the truths thus revealed unite to form a perfect whole adapted to meet the wants of men in all the circumstances and experiences of life i don't know about you guys but when i read that quote it's so powerful right it says there all their experiences harmonize that a that each author brings out some different experience when they walk with Jesus. They bring out some different powerful spiritual point, but all of them harmonize together to bring the perfect whole, right? And that is what we have in the Gospels, right? So I want you guys to, to, to soak this in and just think about some of these things that we talked about, right? As we, look, as we start to look uh, and, and enter into the book of Matthew and... Um, Hopefully that uh, this video has been a blessing as much as it has been to me to to uh, kind of uh, just go over some of these things and um, the context of the Gospels, right? Um, I just uh, hope that uh, everyone was blessed and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.